mission pleasers I call Mark Harris. Yes. Mr Harris, will you come forward? Do you mind stepping into the witness box? Mr Harris, would you prefer to take an oath or would you wish to be affirmed? I'll uh, take the affirmation. Affirm the witness then, please. I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you, Mr Harris. Do sit down. Yes, Ms Orr. Mr Harris, could you please state your full name? Mark Andrew Harris. Your address? 23 Lockerbie Street, Kangaroo Point. And your occupation? Mortgage broker. Thank you. Uh, have you received a summons to attend and give evidence to this Royal Commission? I have. Uh, I tender that summons, Commissioner. Uh, exhibit uh, 1.23, summons to Mark Andrew Harris. And Mr Harris, have you made two statements to the Royal Commission? The first dated the 7th of March 2018 and the second dated the 12th of March 2018? I have. Are the contents of those statements true and correct? They are. Thank you. I tender those statements, Commissioner. Exhibit 1.24 will be statement of Mr Harris dated 7 March 18. Exhibit 1.25, statement of Mr Harris dated 12 March 2018. And I, I should have made uh, clear, Commissioner, that there are exhibits to the first of those statements, the statement dated the 7th of March 2018. The exhibit will include those exhibits, yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Mr Harris, how long have you worked as a mortgage broker? For approximately 18 years. Uh, and what did you do prior to working as a mortgage broker? Prior to that, I worked as a uh, mobile lender at Aussie Home Loans and prior to that, about 12 years working in the Commonwealth Bank, predominantly in lending. Do you have any qualifications, Mr Harris? Yes, I have a Diploma of Mortgage Broking and a Bachelor of Business. Thank you. And do you have a business that offers mortgage broking services? I do. And when did you set that business up? 2013. Uh, and are there other mortgage brokers that work with you in that business? There are. There are six of us all together. Six mortgage brokers. Uh, and does that business have its own Australian credit licence? It does. And do you also have your own Australian credit licence, Mr Harris? I operate under the business's credit licence. Thank you. As a director. Uh, and do you and the other five brokers within your business use an aggregator for we the do. loan submissions that you make? Yes. Uh, and who is the aggregator you use? AFG. Thank you. And since you set up your business in 2013, how many loan applications have you tended to submit a year yourself? I probably only submit about five or six loans per annum. And why only five or six loans per annum, Mr Harris? My main role is a mentor to the other mortgage brokers. But you say you have nonetheless continued to submit loans... Correct. ...after setting the business up, and I, I understood you to say five to six loans a year. Is yes. that right? Um, is there a requirement that lenders... Is there a, requ a requirement by lenders that mortgage brokers be accredited before they can submit loans to that lender? Yes. Uh, and how many lenders have accredited you to submit loans to them? I currently have 23 accreditations. And could you give us some examples of the lenders who've provided accreditations to you? Uh, Westpac, National Australia Bank, uh, Suncorp, Bank of Queensland, Liberty, Bluestone. Did you previously hold an accreditation from CBA? I did. <coughs> when, when were you accredited by CBA? Uh, it was late 2013, early 2014. And in February 2017, did you receive a letter from CBA about your accreditation? I did. It was an email. An email. Thank you. And have you exhibited that email to your statement? I have. Uh, that email is exhibit MAH1 to your statement? Yes. If we could have that brought up. Uh, 
Uh, is this a copy of the letter sent by email to you from CBA on the 20th of February last year? It is. Could I just ask you to read the contents of this letter out, please, Mr Harris? I think we can all read it. It's not a... Uh, we'd not give him a literacy test, I think, Ms Orr. Well, can I take you then, Mr Harris, to some of the parts of this email? Um, we see in... We see two paragraphs at the start that deal with CBA's commitments to customer outcomes and monitoring of mortgage brokers. And then we see a third paragraph, as part of this ongoing monitoring, we have identified that you have not been active with Commonwealth Bank for some time. Accordingly, we have made the decision to resign your accreditation with the Commonwealth Bank in accordance with our agreement with your head group and have advised your head group of this decision. I'll just pause there. The head group is the aggregator, is Correct. that right? The purpose of this letter is to provide you 14 days notice, commencing from the date of this notice, that the bank will exercise its right to revoke your authority to act. This means you will no longer be able to submit home loan applications to the Commonwealth Bank. Please be advised that effective immediately, we will not accept any new home loan applications from you. Uh, what was your reaction to receiving this communication from CBA? Oh, disappointment. A little bit shocked. Had you received any advance notice from CBA that consideration was being given to revoking your accreditation? None at all. Uh, had CBA raised any concerns with you about your performance as a mortgage broker? No. Uh, uh, what were the consequences for you of this accreditation being revoked? Well, as of that email, I was unable to uh, lodge any loans with the Commonwealth Bank. Did CBA's, CBA raised with you that it had received any customer complaints about you? It had not. Uh, had it raised with you any concerns about any inappropriate activity that you had engaged in, in connection with the home loans that you'd submitted? No. Had there been any contact from the CBA about any loans for your customers going into arrears? No. Um, was there any suggestion at all from CBA or any of your customers that they were unhappy with the services you had provided? No. What did you do after you received this email, Mr Harris? Uh, I contacted uh, AFG, uh, my aggregator, and um, to see what their thoughts were. They advised that uh, Commonwealth Bank had given them notice that this might be happening. Uh, they weren't aware it was going to proceed, but they were aware it was a possibility. Um, and that, um, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. My accreditation was cut as at that moment. What is the impact on you of being unable to submit loan applications to CBA? Well, if I have a client who I feel for whatever reason is, is suited to the Commonwealth Bank, I would not be able to uh, help that client. Now, you've annexed to your uh, first statement, Mr Harris, an email chain, uh, which I'd just like to take you through, uh, starting with the first email in the chain at CBA 00010100573 exhibited to the affidavit, uh, the uh, statement? It's part of MAH2. Uh, no, I don't think... So, if we have MAH2. It's page 5734 within that exhibit. Thank
All right, could we move, that's part way through the email chain. That's the, the email, I'm sorry, we, we seem to have two different doc IDs, which is the cause of the confusion there. Now, uh, Mr Harris, the letter that was sent to you about the resignation or revocation of your accreditation was dated the 20th of February 2017. Uh, this is an email from you uh, dated the 8th of February 2017 before the revocation of the accreditation. Uh, that's been sent to a person whose details have been blocked out, but um, I, I want to suggest to you, and you've seen this document before, that the person you sent it to was a person at CBA. Correct. Yes. And you've also copied uh, a person there who was part of the aggregator, is that Correct. right? Correct, yes. And another person from CBA as well. That's right. And can you explain uh, what you were saying to the CBA person in this email that predated the revocation of your accreditation? Okay, the, the four major banks require mortgage brokers to be a member of either one of two organisations, either the MFAA or FBAA, both bro broker organisations. That requirement uh, has been in place for quite a long time. In fact, it was there prior to ASIC regulating the industry. And so the industry essentially use those two organisations to regulate the industry. The um, MFAA and FBAA required that we um, have certain education requirements, uh, professional indemnity cover, be uh, members of external resolution organisations. So the organisation used those, those two organisations to do that. Now, since ASEC has regulated it, um, those requirements uh, have been adopted and are required by ASEC. So uh, my belief is because we are regulated now by ASEC and in fairness the requirements of ASEC are, are more stringent than those two, two organisations, that the majors requiring us to be still members of those organisations is an obsolete requirement. It's just left over and nothing's, nothing's been addressed. It's just another piece of paper, uh, another loophole that a broker has to do and I just don't believe it's necessary. And I see from your email that you uh, told CBA that you were raising these issues with ANZ, NAB and Westpac as well. Correct. Yes. Now, so that email is the first in the chain from the 8th of February 2017. If we could go to the next email in the chain. We'll have to go the other direction in the document. Um, we'll see that there's a response to your email from this, on the same date, uh, the 8th of February. No, not quite at the document yet. There we are, down the bottom of the page. Now, this is from a person who uh, was with AFG, the aggregator. Correct. Is that right? And the aggregator appears in this email to express support for your position about this. Is yes, that right? Yes, it is. Uh, then further up in the chain, we see a response from one of the CBA people that you sent the email to on the same page. Uh, this is some days later, the 14th of February, 2017. And in that email, uh, the person from CBA um, advises you that that requirement is going to remain as part of the Correct. accreditation requirements for CBA. Is yes. that an accurate description of that communication? It is. Then the next email in the chain, which starts on the preceding page, is your email on the day you received the letter revoking or resigning your accreditation on the 20th of February, is that right? Yes. And we can see that you've directed this email to the same individuals at CBA and uh, within the aggregator. Yes. And if we move to the next page, we'll see the text of your email. Uh, no, I'm sorry, we have to move in the other direction. Yes. Uh, no, not quite there. Need to go another page. There we go. Okay, so the email that you sent is at the bottom of... Uh, I think it's best to keep both of those pages on the screen. Oh, 
apologise, this will get confusing. Your email on the 20th of February, the text of it appears at the top of the next page. Hi all, I just had my accreditation cancelled by CBA. Interesting timing. By the way, it was apparently due to not being active for some time. However, I settled a $900,000 loan in October, so that's a bit odd. Was that a reference to a loan that you'd settled for CBA? Correct. Yes, I see. Uh, there is a response to that email from CBA on the same date, uh, assuring you that there is no ulterior motive at play here. Yes, your accreditation has been called into review by our risk team along with many others. This is as a result of low volumes over recent years. <coughs> I engaged with Becky on this last week. Becky's from the aggregator. Correct. Beck is helping me put together an appeal to reinstate given the changes and growth in your business. Normally we would ask that you appeal this via your relationship manager, however I have attempted to jump in early on your behalf, not quick enough it seems. I will come back to you as soon as I can with an outcome. Now, what, what did you interpret these references to an appeal to mean here? Well I, I had, I've had two mortgage broking companies and uh, between myself and my brokers, we, we have written literally hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business for the Commonwealth Bank. So because of that, I've, I've had a, a, a quite a connection with Commonwealth Bank and indeed I used to work there. So I just, it was my understanding that um, the Commonwealth Bank representative was going to, as a special matter, see if the decision could be reversed. But you told him not to worry about doing that, it seems, in the email that yes. is at the top of this page. And perhaps we can now move to having that page and the page prior to it on the screen so we can see when you wrote this email and who you wrote it to. So following day, the 21st of February, to the same group of people. And in this email you express disappointment that CBA has cancelled your accreditation given your very strong support over the years. Is that strong support what you were just referring to then? Correct. Um, as you know, while I do not write many loans, my brokers have, both in my prior firm of Home Loan Connection and my current business. My larger concern is that you might do this to one of my brokers. To cancel the accreditation without notice is, in my opinion, very poor customer service and could put a broker in a very difficult position. Uh, what were you referring to there? What were your concerns about the position that this would put brokers in? Well, my concerns were my brokers specifically, but it, you know, it, it could apply to any broker, that they are out one Wednesday night writing a home loan for a client and Commonwealth Bank was, was going to be, in their opinion, the, uh, the best fit. And then uh, when they go to uh, submit it on the, the Thursday morning, they find an email waiting for them cancelling their accreditation so they wouldn't be able to proceed with that loan. Mm. You go on to say in your email, apparently this is of no concern to your organisation. While I appreciate your working with Becky to have accreditations reinstated, I think it speaks volumes that CBA have done this to start with. Don't worry about looking to reinstate my accreditation. I will, of course, not welcome your BDMs. Could you tell us what a BDM is? Business Development Manager. To any of my team meetings and will advocate against considering CBA given your policy of not giving any notice to the accreditation cancellations. I'm sure you will agree this is a sensible business decision. And do we see then that there's some subsequent engagement between you and the CBA representative about potentially meeting to discuss this? Yes. Did that ever occur? It didn't. Uh, did you take any other steps as a result of the revocation or resignation of your accreditation, Mr Harris? No. Uh, did you speak publicly about the revocation of your accreditation? I did. I, I made a statement to uh, one of the um, mortgage broker industry magazines, it's uh, online publication, and that was then picked up by a couple of the national newspapers. Mm -hmm. And do you recall what sort of statement you made to that publication? Yeah, it was essentially that the, the, there's, there's a number of concerns here, but the, the biggest concern, I guess, is that if there are minimum performance standards that a lender, Commonwealth Bank, are putting in place, that seems to override any liability we've got in respect of putting a client into the best loan for them. So that 
if I believe over the last couple of years I haven't had a client that is the best fit for the Commonwealth Bank, well, it doesn't really matter to the Commonwealth Bank. They require a minimum performance standard. So the concern is that that will push brokers into using Commonwealth Bank where they should not have done. Thank you, Mr Harris. I have no further questions. Yes, yes Mr Sherry. You know, I, I, was, I did say I wasn't going to ask any questions, but I could just ask two, if you don't mind, based on what's happened. Um, Mr Harris, how many loans did you write in 2016 for the Commonwealth Bank? 2016 yes. uh, would have been none. And what about 2015? None. Thank you. Yes. Any other uh, person having leave to appear seek leave to cross-examine? No? Ms Orr? No, no further questions. No further questions. Thank Mr. You, Harris, Commissioner. thank you for coming from interstate. You're excused further attendance. Uh, we'll resume sitting at uh, 9.45 tomorrow. Commissioner, please.